Hey, welcome to Across the Obelisk. It's going to be a Let's Play video. I don't know. It's My channel is fucking schizophrenic where um, half the time it's some bullshit, you know, ranty, complaining philosophy, and half the time it's uh, video game stuff. But um, the disclaimer for this, well, this is a, a deck builder first and foremost. It's uh, four characters. Um, some people kind of say it's like Slay the Spire or Darkest Dungeon if they or, you know, put together almost. It's a little less harsh than uh, Darkest Dungeon. The battles are uh, probably not as quick. Early game, they're probably about as quick, but late game, um, the battles can take a little bit longer, depending on, like, what kind of builds you do. And, um, yeah, you're basically, if you play single player, you're managing four decks, four different characters. It's not as intimidating as it sounds, though, because usually the deck is um, trying to accomplish, you know, one thing. Um, you're not really playing the characters as like a free for all. You want to kind of create synergy between the characters. So, uh, let's, you know, jump into the game and I'll, I, I'll try to explain the disclaimer. I was going to say though, I unlocked these already and, um, there is meta progression. So starting a new game now is not going to be, you know, this isn't going to be exactly what it's going to look like for you. If you do decide to buy this game, um, I unlocked like this is what you start with these four characters and uh, you can unlock these characters these are coming soon i'm really excited about that i hope there's like a mate um uh, you know like a what is that called again i'm gonna sound stupid like a chain ball guy and uh i think they're supposed to be more of like a a bow and arrow type rogue you can play them any way you want really but some of them do kind of fall into certain play styles like this is sort of like the poison rogue this is more of like a mark rogue which doesn't make much sense that keyword doesn't make much sense to people who haven't played but it, it kind of like enhances damage if you hit something something with mark and they all kind of have like sort of like a way you can fall into the character like a way to play them and they they have a uh, different uh, you know skill uh, paths you can go down during the game when they level up and stuff i really like the robot he's like a tank this is kind of like a off tank he can you can also play him as damage as well this is like a berserker he's mainly i would say damaged but you can also play him as like a tank or a bruiser type character uh different mages this is more like a utility or uh support type mage he's electric primarily she can go, uh, go anything really um but I, I don't think she's really a master of any but uh she can kind of like go any uh fire mage um he could go uh, bless, like a like a light damage or whatever, a holy damage, or he could be a healer. Could be a, this is more of a shielder. That there is a difference between healing and like you know creating block and shield on characters. Witch doctor character, she's pretty cool. She's uh, more like regeneration. She puts dark stacks that explode. I'm I'm over explaining this. I'm getting too into it. I, I've been really into this game actually. I have over a hundred hours already. So sorry, I'm just so uh, excited about it. Um, I'm probably going to put this guy in front and he'll be the tank. I'm going to go, this is also something like this starts here. I'm going to go madness one cause I've been playing and it's just a little bit harder. I think this basically means that they have their normal kit essentially like their normal deck, the monsters, as opposed to like, this is like a slightly easier version to like kind of get your foot in the door. This, I kind of consider this like the normal difficulty like too. And then this starts getting like harder. Maybe this is the normal dif difficulty, right? Because then this exhaust mechanic comes into play later on. Uh, when you use a card that causes the deck to cycle, you suffer exhaust, causing any card that comes into your hand during that turn to cost additional energy. Okay, so that means I think when it's reshuffled, when you uh, your draw pile is uh, all in your discard pile, and then when you need to draw a card, that discard pile being shuffled back into your draw, I'm assuming that's what that means. I'm just going to do the plus one difficulty, though. And uh, we'll put him in the front. He's the standard guy you start with. So we'll keep it pretty pretty typical um, with that. And then actually, I'm, I'm going to probably go Wilbur. You want to just do the actual, the normal, t the team that you start out with. Then uh, we can do that. So here's like the starting characters. I ranked them up though a little bit already. Which does affect them. And I want to show you that. Um, see, when, when you level up uh, characters, your highest character... Once they get to a certain level, um, I forget what it is now. And if it's here, sorry, if I seem stupid. But you unlock these uh, these tiered things, and you can kind of put points into these. And uh, this actually helps a lot. So the meta progression is extremely helpful. So the first, like, two or three runs, I want to say, you are going to be at a disadvantage until you can unlock this. I think this is probably, like, 
maybe six, seven hours in, you'll have the whole thing. And and once you get one, you get all of them, right? So it's like once your highest character can unlock the whole tree, it's like it, it might be seven or like like seven or eight hours or something. I don't know. But then you'll unlock the whole tree and you get and stuff like this is huge. Initial energy, initial energy, you know, um starting gold, etc. So it does help a lot. And you unlock skins eventually and stuff. I think the you know the store the normal wolf is pretty cool. Uh, card backs. So there's a lot of nice like customization in the game. I hope I hope they add more. And then there's rank as well. And this is also very helpful. The uh, starting items and the starting uh, talents and cards. So as you can see, like I have the yellow you know item for this guy now. So instead of like slash damage, it's all damage, and uh, it adds. You can look at what it used to be too, right? So it starts this is this. There's no damage that so goes to slash damage. Random hero gains both you know this car uh, extra card on the on their turn. And then it um, <clears throat> ends up being, you know, the best version of itself. Same thing with, like, their starting cards. And then when you eventually level up in-game, you go to level 5 and you choose these paths for your... It's almost like a skill tree, almost. You kind of, like, further define the role that they're playing in the party. These uh, also level up. So I don't have this as yellow yet. So as you can see, it, uh, you know, it'll get an upgrade. And all these will get, to, you know, various upgrades. It's like, oh, he gains more armor this time or whatever, more block when he, uh, you know, gets damaged by others or whatever. So that's very good, too, when you start playing the game more and going through it. Like, that's extremely helpful. It's not, like, make or break, but it is very helpful to get those little bonuses, to get the extra, you know, three, like, this 25% on this one, uh, 15 as opposed to 14. I mean, it, it is helpful. So um, we'll play <clears throat> this, the normal characters. So we're gonna begin the adventure. Uh, sorry, there's a lot of talking. I, I just get I get so, so excited about the early game. I love the early game in this. So here's the map and here's the town. Um, and you want to make your way through the map, different paths and different little story events. And you can unlock characters like there's the lizard guy, here's the robot, here's the pig, etc. You can unlock different characters going through their little you know uh, story quest type thing. You have to fulfill certain requirements or do something for them. Here's another character. So they're all pretty easy to get. You can just look it up online too if you're confused what to do. Um, they're not nothing is really that complicated uh, when it comes to unlocking characters. I think I looked up like one, uh, maybe. Um, but yeah, and then you end up here, boss fight, next map. So we're gonna click first. We're gonna click the town, and this is also part of the meta progression. When you you know when you uh, go through the game, you kind of start stacking up gold and um, these gems, and then you get a bonus for your next game um, from your last game. So I, I start with a little bit more. So yeah, your game won't look like this when you first start. You'll probably be more limited. And when I'm building decks, I'm going to consider that fact. Um, I'm also, I am going pets though, which you won't have either when you're starting. So I'm putting Orby on this guy because he's going to be a tank. This guy creates a shield essentially um, every turn for, you know, the wearer of the um, pet. And then let's see here. Dispel your bleed and self heal. That could probably be on the rogue. <clears throat> or, you know, dispel one in general and get uh, speed. Let's just put the bloodsucker one on him and see if he can get a heal. He won't, basically will never have bleed until the last boss. The last boss does kill pets. So you can't have them the entire game. But you can have them, you know, 98% of the game. And then I'm thinking she can go uh, lightning primarily. I mean, I think there's cold, too. There's lightning, cold, um, fire, and what else? I think mages can also go dark, but I've never really gone, like, dark or anything, I don't think, with them. So I'm probably gonna, just going to go fire. This is puts mark on a target. It puts fire on a target. So I think this is uh, really good for her because... I'm going to go mark for the, uh, this is what I mean by synergy too. Obviously, if you're a gamer, you know what synergy means, but in card games, but how, you know, the characters work together, their decks work together. So this is going to be applying mark. She's going to be applying uh, burn and fire. So this would kind of work in like two, two fronts. It's like, you know, two uh, different things you want uh, for your team comp. And then we got the healer. So maybe just dispelling the healer, I'm assuming. It says sight. Sight shows you the attacks of the cards on this, you know, this little, uh, these little symbols. And uh, a lot of the symbols in this game are just uh, resistance. 
like they'll you know um like that's like insanity resistance so if you do that brain damage or whatever and ins insanity damage it'll deal more damage but a lot of them also do something like like insanity will also make them deal less damage so for every like one you have I think it's for every like 10 you have it's like it's a uh, 0.5 or something so if you have like two they're doing like one percent less damage i forget exactly what it is but yeah uh long story short we'll probably put wind blessing on him or all resist actually but we'll probably do wind blessing so he uh gets to dispel something bad essentially on him every turn and he gains speed which is good because he's a bit slower of a character i think yeah, 13 speed, so he's the slowest in the group. He's the fastest. He'll be going first. He'll be going, even with uh, monsters, he'll probably be always going first. He's also fast, so he'll probably go second most of the time. And then these guys are going to be lagging behind a little bit, depending on the monster speed. They actually all have different uh, resistances as well, the different characters. Um, so anyway, you go craft your deck. This is the first thing that I would personally do. Um, they all have their starting deck. They, they're okay, but they're not uh, super direct uh, directed or, you know, uh, in a in a direction that it's a little all over the place. Like, it's like, okay, we have slashing damage, then we also have, like, tank stuff. It's, it's kind of, like, n indecisive. So I have this shield wolf one saved. Um, I tried to make it, keep it pretty low to the ground, low cost. It costs 882 to, you know, uh, do this. I don't know if I need two shield charges necessarily, though. I might actually just not go two shield charges, so maybe we can just... I can just show you the forge. So I'm going a, a shield build where... I'm essentially using my block to deal damage. And uh, so I want this. This is the, the primary attack for that. And it doesn't waste your shield either. There's some that actually will purge your shield if you use it. So... You know, you can see this. It does 0.3 of your shield, but it purges your shield and does it to all monsters. So that's um, a big AoE if you can get your shield up uh, enough. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Maybe I could just do that and try to shield slam uh, early. It'd be kind of cool. But uh, later on, we'll get something called shield throw. And I think that one's kind of neat. And it usually wipes like three of the monsters anyway. So if my other guys can take one, I, I kind of like shield throw more. A big thing with shield as well is um, we need a way to keep the shield on our character between turns. So that's what Fortify does, this mechanic here. And that uh, it's one is removed uh, between turns, and when there's zero, your, your excess block or whatever block you have on your character will just go away. Um, you'll lose it. So we do need guard. So I'm going to put two guards in the stack. And... I think another another good value per energy uh, block move, at least early game. Late game, you kind of want to trade these for uh, you know higher quality block moves. But I do like defend a lot, so that one's good. Then we're gonna remove excess cards. We have to keep these decks you know tight. We have to keep them. Um, in my opinion, uh, I love Enrage. This is a great one. You take this late game on pretty much any character that can. They they have separate uh, card pools, you know, the rogues, the warriors, etc. But on most warriors, I find that you do want Enrage in most deck types. It's just good. It uses one energy. And you can upgrade these too, right? So you use an energy, you get two back, and you draw a card. So there's pretty much no downside. Um, and you can also upgrade it, see? And it also gives you powerful later on. Or it, you can make it so it doesn't uh, vanish. That's a mechanic too. If it has this burning thing, you'll lose the card for the battle. Just the battle. It'll come back next battle. But um, if you want, you can make it so it'll re reoccur in your deck and it'll be shuffled back in when you you know, you know spend your draw pile or you can make it vanish. This is usually what I do, actually. I don't necessarily need to keep it because it, it kind of clogs your deck too, in a way. You kind of want all the decks to be like tight and doing like one thing, you know? So I like getting the powerful. Uh, this boosts your uh, character's damage. Unfortunately, you lose two between turns. But... Um, yeah, you draw, you draw a card, you get the two, and then you get powerful, and then the enrage goes away. So you know, next draw, if you want, you know, your shield charge, you have a higher, you know, probability of getting it. Essentially, like I like to get rid of some of some of the uh, utility type cards and uh, energy boosting cards. But anyway, I'm talking way too much. 
about this game and you probably just want to see the game. Uh, we're going to get rid of some of these fast strikes. Uh, barricade, probably, because this is for the for the money, or I'm sorry, for the uh, energy, it gives you less. I know it does to all heroes, but all these guys, they're not really going to have fortify and they're going to lose the armor anyway. Unless we can figure out a way to like keep armor on everybody and go some kind of like crazy like armor on everybody build or whatever. So we're getting rid of that and then um, probably getting rid of fast strike. And then I actually don't like Captain Cell. I don't know if somebody's yelling at their computer that this is a really good. I don't like it because, and I know it's vanishes too, but I don't like it because it clogs like a space in the deck. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it's like instead of doing four vulnerable and you know making them. You know, oh, uh, minus 20 resistance and slower. I'd rather just be doing 13 damage, personally. So I'm getting rid of that. Maybe that's the wrong choice. Maybe mathematically it's good. But um, I, I don't like getting it in my hand. I feel like it's kind of a waste of a spot. So we're probably just going to start with this. We've got the guards. We've got a lot of defends. We have the enrage. So that'll just cycle the cards through. And then we have a couple attacks just for early game, really. We'll replace those later. And then the big payoff card, which uses our, you know, shield to deal damage. And then I have a, a pre-made deck for this guy, I think, called Mark Noob. Try to keep it super low to the ground, only 300 crystals. I basically just added two deflects because deflect is like a free a freebie, essentially, card. You uh, spend zero mana. You get a card. You get a card right back for you know using the card, and then you also gain seven armor. So there's pretty much no point, in my opinion, not to just take this any time it comes up in the game. It just boosts his armor for the turn, and then you get to your you know slices and your uh, damage cards anyway. With this deck, I try to go a lot of slice because you can, um, as you can see, we can upgrade your cards. You can upgrade slice. This is how you upgrade them. And uh, the higher rarities cost more. See how this is a green rarity. It costs 90 to upgrade it. This is a common rarity. Like uh, any card game, really. This is blue, so it costs more even. Um, you can get a mark with this when you upgrade it. And that'll uh, increase damage uh, when people attack the uh, monster with slice. So I go a slice build usually with rogue. That's what I started doing. When I first started playing, I was just like, yeah, play rogue is slice rogue. Because I think that's really cool. It's good. Boost the damage for everybody. I think it's useful. Um, not even a huge fan of adrenaline. I have a lot of uh, blue crystals though, so I'm gonna, you might not have as much as me if you just start playing, but um, I'm gonna have it burn because again I don't like deck you know clog essentially so it's gonna burn away it'll be a nice little boost and then it'll go away. Um, these I want to replace pretty much all of this later for extra mark uh, building attacks but for now I will upgrade these. Um, we can make them heavier hitters so we'll keep this at two as you can see when you upgrade you can go a little bit less damage but only one energy. So essentially it's doing the same as slice. It doesn't apply mark though, and it's any monster instead of front monster. So you know that's fine. We'll keep the damage higher in it too, and it could be a pay like a, a little bit more if our hand turns out a way where we have excess mana or whatever. Which the rogue can definitely have some excess mana, especially if you do like a slice build. It's very low to the ground. It's like a very uh, low cost build. So you could, like uh like an average turn you could slice 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 and then like an aim shot or whatever. Uh, rupture, keep it to front monster just because it does more damage and bleed. Or more bleed, I'm sorry. It does bleed either way. But yeah, we'll just do front monster. It's fine. Slice does front monster. We'll you know, we'll try to plow through the front monsters. This will upgrade these. So I mean, for one energy, you get 23 uh, block on this guy. So I think that's pretty good. I'm just doing that. You can make it zero, but later on, uh, when you're going a shield build, you can get it so all the... Uh, all the uh, defense cards in your hand are reduced by one uh, when you on the draw. So if you have these, they cost zero. So if you have zero, you're essentially wasting that ability. I know that's thinking like too far ahead, if, especially for like first timers. But I do like the one cost defense or uh, defend, and then eventually replace them anyway later. I'm gonna go uh, powerful and rage that does burn when you use it. Fast strike. We'll just do front for more damage, especially for early game. I think this is just useful just to plow through the stuff. We're going to definitely go Fortify, as you can see. This will give us Slashing, Blunt, and Piercing Resistance. This, um, this uh, you know, uh, symbol here, or whatever the, whatever it's called. But it doesn't give us the... And it will give us more armor, but it doesn't give us the Fortify, which that's what we're actually looking for. We want to keep our armor on between uh, rounds. 
So I think it's important to have at least two fortify things uh, early game for um, for the uh, you know if you go a shield build, and then we'll do front monster because it does uh, as you can see it does less but it costs less money or I'm sorry energy, so we'll keep that uh, low to the ground. Nice just front monster attack, and then we're gonna do, this is our payoff card. We're not using this too often, so we'll definitely we want the better ratio, the uh, block you know damage ratio. So it doesn't matter three cost, that's fine. That's the payoff card, so we'll keep it uh keep it high. And then with her, do we have cold cold and wet right? And then fire, we're gonna go fire noob. I could probably just um go through this too so this is a really good system uh searching for cards you can search for the actual um uh let me let me show you what i mean you can search for the keywords you can type in fire and it'll, go, it'll come up with fire spells i can type in burn and it'll come up with like the burn spells you can go it's almost like hearthstone in a way with this kind of stuff you can go to the different costs so we're gonna do a burn build and a fire build with her so what we want to do heat wave could be good for just getting rid of this because i oh, i'm sorry it doesn't get rid of it um it does dispel water which is nice and here we go ember storm i think does go away i really like ember storm uh it's a one cost you can upgrade it so it does vanish and it does decent uh burn and uh fire damage and the thing about this is uh, what it, which is nice ember storm in my opinion is that it, it vanishes, so you kind of get rid of the AoE attacks, they vanish, and then she's on to the single target. And by that time, that you know, the early game, this is spent, this is vanished, you, you're only on to single targets anyway. You probably melted at least one or two monsters, and then you don't really need AoEs. It's a waste to do an AoE. It's a waste of uh, excess damage that would be damaging multiple. Now you only need to hit one, but see, now it's vanished. So I think that's a very useful, or, um, early game at least. Um, we're not setting ourselves on fire necessarily. This is like a, there's a certain build and there's a certain character that fire mage kind of like he burns himself a little bit more and this is uh, more useful on him. You can still you can go any build on any character really, but I like searing touch a lot. It hits front only, but it does like uh, higher damage. So we'll go searing touch, and then the just the absolute. Uh, see, this is a way you can. Um, I'm sorry, I suffer. That's that's fire damage, not burn. So that's not actually what I was uh, going to talk about. I think Flare is just like the classic fire, fireball, etc. So that's uh, really good. So we'll go two of those. And by that time, and I love this one. I like it a lot. This is high damage. It uh, it says repeat. So it does the effect, you know, X amount of times, right? So this effect will happen three times. So we upgrade this random monster or we can hit, uh, you know, a monster of our choice. But if it's a random monster, it repeats another time, right? So what what is uh five times three? Fifteen and then four times four. Uh I sound like an idiot now. Uh what is that? Four times four times two, eight, sixteen, sixteen. So this will deal da -da -da, six uh twelve, and this will do uh, let's see, eight and twelve burns. So this does uh, end up doing more damage. And when I like this actually too. Because when it goes down to one monster, it doesn't matter that it's random. Like, right, if you need to nuke down somebody, it's good to keep it on monster. But um, I actually usually go random on those. That's just personal preference, in my opinion. It's There's no really right answer. But, I mean, there's a right answer if you want to actually take one particular monster down quickly. That's probably not the way to do it, right? But, um, yeah, that's how I like to play games. It's just I want to do high single target damage, keep it uh, AoE. Uh, AoE early with this Ember Storm. We'll upgrade that later to vanish it. But I'm getting rid of all these defense cards actually because I want her to play a certain way. You know, this Cold Spark, she starts with this too, and it's like you know it does cold, it does lightning, depending on our hand size. That's fine. I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't. I don't need that. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm going fire. So I need to get rid of four more cards. So if there's like four more fire spells we can get, I'm gonna upgrade some of these too. Here's Fire Blast is a zero cost fire spell. Monster, monster, zero, zero. Um, this applies burn though, so we will do that. I want to apply burn to the enemies. Doesn't vanish. I actually want this to vanish. This energized means you get an extra, uh, extra energy next turn. So this two means you get an ex uh, two energy right now on the turn that you played it. This means next turn. So this is giving me three energy in total for essentially a card space 
in my hand and zero energy. So this is pretty good value. I'm going to get the three energy for that. It'll disappear, but that's fine. We only need it to kind of boost our energy for a little bit. See, that Ember Storm is now going to vanish when we use it, and that's what I'm saying, the strategy of kind of spending the AoEs, some monsters dying, and then you're kind of back onto single target. So um, front monster, look at this. This does. Uh, this actually applies vulnerable too, this sear, uh, searing touch. I don't know if I'm going to do that necessarily because I do like the burn, but that's actually pretty useful, and it does increase damage from all characters. So um, I don't know if it's going to be enough necessarily, though to really start stacking and keeping it on because as you can see it removed two charges at the start of the turn so and she's a slower character so um you know having the vulnerable on it's pretty cool but it's better if it's an, a faster character essentially or if there's you can stack enough where it'll still have vulnerable on it the next turn so i'm just gonna go burn the higher burn damage flare you can actually increase it to three to get a little even more damage i'm probably gonna keep it lower to the ground for now but maybe we can we can have like one. Actually, we're not going to because Scorching Ray is kind of that three cost heavy hitter, and we're gonna go random as well. So when there's only one monster, this is gonna hit him pretty hard. And then uh, let's see if there's anything else we can possibly put in this deck. A little utility maybe. We can add Fire Blast. We can have Fire Storms AOE. I don't want to play her AoE as much as I just want to do t uh, single target. All monsters apply like one burn. Heavy damage for two. Oh, look at this. Whatever my burn is, and that's like the damage and burn you deal, but then you also suffer that fire damage and burn that's pretty crazy um i never really messed around with this too much um duh, 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 duh. i'm gonna actually we're gonna roll cards too so we'll see if we can roll anything to replace these four things and then we have this blessed noob set up here what i did is i added two holy smites because this blessed mechanic's really cool um the more bless he has the more damage he does essentially and the more healing he uh will receive so he keeps playing these holy spells, and the, basically the strategy with this is I do want a few heals in the deck, but I'm going to play him more like damage. And um, I want to basically get maybe five or six of these holy smites. You know, stack bless, stack bless, stack bless, stack damage. And then uh, these flashes can go to zero mana. And then they're hitting for like, you know, 20-something, 30-something per... So when I spend the mana, I have a couple, two, three flashes to uh, use at the end, even at zero mana for that, you know, extra bonus damage. So um, <clears throat> I don't even really want to, I'm going to upgrade this to heroes because it starts global, which I don't like, but I do probably want to replace that eventually. And then we're going to upgrade the flash, like I said, to the zero cost flash. And then, oh, I'm just, whoops, I didn't actually do the deck that I said I was going to do. I can't craft it now because I upgraded stuff. That's fine. I know I already know what I need to do to craft it. So, we'll just we'll just search it. It's fine. So, holy smite adding two of those um add flashes. That's fine. And that's about all I want to do right now and then I'll remove foresight. This is, uh, again, it shows their hand. That's what this means. And there's other characters. There's like a Lovecraftian uh a uh, priest that uses this in his kit more for damage, the sight. Um, this priest doesn't really use this as much. Uh, it's used in a way, again, where you see the cards they're going to use, but I don't really find that all that um, useful. Especially since if you play through the game a couple times, you, you know, four, five, six, seven times, you start to kind of know what the monsters are going to at attack with anyway. So that is not inherently like uh, useful, in my opinion. And then uh, let's get rid of heal. Seems weird to get rid of heal on the healer, but on the priest. But we don't. We're not really going. We're gonna go uh, more corrupt heals. I think that's what it's called. The mechanic where you have a chance when you receive cards in the game that it's like a corrupt card. It's pretty cool, and they're like an upgraded version that you can't actually upgrade yourself. It's just random, and you get um, 
like an upgraded, really awesome version that also vanishes when you use it. So I'm pretty much shooting for corrupt heals in this deck, and then the consistency will be with these smites and these flashes. Uh, I think that's about right. And then so now that we uh, got our basic decks together, now that it's been a half an hour of not playing the game, uh, we go to... I'm going to put this on this guy too. So starting... Uh, I don't believe your starting town starts with uh, rare items either. This is part of the medical progression. But as you can see, it adds fortify stacks. It adds uh, block stacks when he uh, applies those charges. So that's really useful uh, early. So we'll put that on him. When you play a melee attack, draw a card. More slash damage. That's perfect for our rogues. So we're going to put that on him. Uh, when you heal a hero, apply one water. There's something... Or wet... This can be used for a particular card. I think it's called uh, Baptism, where you can actually convert uh, Wetness into Bless stacks, which is kind of cool, but I'm not doing that, so I'm not going to take this. There's probably other, maybe other reasons uh, to uh, do this. Maybe putting out fire, maybe on her, or whatever it is. I don't, I don't know, but I'm not going to pick that. I just wanted to talk about it for a second. And then All Resistance, uh, let's put that on the Rogue as well. We have a lot of money. And that's about it. So we go to the uh, Zingarian cart. We put, pay gold to the beautiful Zingara and get a divination round. So it sounds all confusing, right? Divination round. Basically, we're getting new cards. That's it. And we can choose to take a card from the selection, or we can just take the crystals if we don't like any of the cards. Um, when you first start playing, this is all real exciting, and it still is exciting. I love, I love getting you know cards for the deck and building the deck. But the point I'm going to make real quick is. You don't want to take something just to take it most of the time, uh, unless it works for your build. So we're going the shield build for this guy. So does this really work for the shield build? Equals your bleed, dispel your bleed, apply, you know, X about a bleed. Not really. War paint. This could work. It gives them powerful. But really, all I'm trying to do is build shield as fast as possible and then pay the pay. I'm sorry, play the payoff card. So this might actually end up being deck clog, in my opinion. So I'm not going to pick it. Maybe somebody's screaming at their computer. They say it's, this is a really good... You know, ability, it can vanish too, right? It can draw a card, I can just cycle. It doesn't give me the energy back though, and then it gives me three powerful. I mean, it's a good card. It's a good card for certain builds, but I'm not going to pick it. Dispel, dispels two negative effects. Discard one card at random. Um, I'm not going to go any of those. For the rogue, I'm not really going a stealth build. Evade is a, a very useful mechanic. It prevents a hit, right? So you can stack up these and prevent multiple hits. But I want to go mostly damage, so I'm probably going to skip that. Uh, this doesn't apply mark or anything. Uh, it applies a little bleed if you upgrade it the correct way. This um, It's just a damage card, really. Um, this isn't really part of the kit that I want to build for him, so I'm going to skip that. Let's see. Fireball, target side. So it's pretty good damage. Targets multiple uh, characters. We can actually get rid of this, too, which is kind of useful. It doesn't apply burn, but that is kind of nice. Uh, maybe I will do the fireball. And I like how that I can make it vanish and then focus more on single targets later. So I will take that. And then none of this because I really just want to focus on uh, the, the... It's a purple text when you see it. I think it's called corrupt, like a corrupt card. You'll notice it, and I'll point it out when I get one. I def I'll definitely get one before the journey starts. It's like a really ad like an advanced version of the card that vanishes. And I'm looking for corrupt heals, blesses, flashes, and then possibly some uh, purple rarities... But none of this really, um, none of this really, he's not He's not playing a dark build or anything. There's better characters for that too. There's that uh, witch doctor lady, there's, uh, you know, the voodoo, whatever, uh, witch doctor. She uh, d does more of the dark stuff. You can play him dark, but, you know, he's not necessarily, it's not his strength. So, and then real quick, I'll get rid of, uh, let's see here, a frost bolt. Because we got that fireball. Can upgrade the fireball real quick. Get through the vanishing fireball. Does more, you know, damage. Does more damage. Target sides, more damage to sides. But it vanishes. Oh, okay, that's fine. Because then, you know, it goes away. The AoE's done. And then we're on to single target. So that's that's okay. So we'll do a fast. And this is obviously... Oh, you get a, a, a chance for better cards. To get it. And this is actually... I think you get four cards. So let's do that. You get four cards, right? So we have such a higher chance of um, getting a card that we want like for example i see this right away this meditate for the uh priest there's really no downside to this zero mana you know takes up a card slot but then you draw the cards the card right back and then you have two two extra energy next turn so this is pretty much uh a, 
a freebie. I, I don't know. It's an easy decision, I guess. I'm trying to find an expression for that. So meditate, I pretty much take no matter what. I mean, past four or five, maybe I might not consider taking it, but there's really no point to not take it. Um, for her, unfortunately, I don't really like any of this. I don't want to go like immolate. That's a little too confusing for me. And then there's a lot of dark stuff and whatever. Um, sneaky strike. It's more of a poison stealth build. That's more of the uh, lizard rogue kind of could u- utilize that a little bit more. Uh, debilitate maybe it does put on mark it does put on weak damage and healed on see that minus 50% that could be useful it also puts poison on them and uh, let's see how we can upgrade it poison weak mark four mark for three back monster it uh, disappears I don't know I, this could put on a lot of mark if we do go this. It does vanish too. So I might take that. I'll take that and I'll replace because we have some stuff that are is replaceable right now, like these aim shots and ruptures. So I'll take the debil- uh, debilitate. And then none of this, I don't think. I mean, this is it's cool. It's cool looking. It's like a rare, it's a blue rarity. Look at all that damage. It's four cost though. It applies a lot of bleed. I'm not really going a bleed build. Um, here's, uh, we get thorns, which, and that's a cool mechanic too, but I'm not necessarily going a thorns build. And obviously because of the thorns and the cost, the block isn't quite as good. It's more of a, you know, it's more about the thorns. Obviously it does apply block, but it is, you know, more of a thorns card. So I'm not going to take that. So we'll get rid of this heal, make room for the meditate i can still get rid of these barriers in this healing rain theoretically here four cards about that he could use um let's get rid of the aim shot for the uh debilitate and upgrade that and let's do the one that applies more mark it shows five now i th- i think it's because the uh rogue gets more mark stacks or whatever it was i think it said four before um let's do this back monster that's fine meditate let's upgrade that right away see this uh we get an extra card next turn too we get additional energy next turn and an additional card and we draw back the card we used for the slot on the turn and it's zero energy so it's that's what i mean it's just kind of pointless not to take it if it comes up all right let's roll again we'll do a basic basic is kind of clutch sometimes i think the basic divination does give me some corrupt cards and like it seems like good value for the 480 um gold you spend on it i could talk all day i mean i really enjoy the early game in this game i can talk all day i don't want to take blood rage um i prefer enrage than blood rage because uh enrage actually draws you a card this just gives you energy and you also lose a little bit of health and apply bleed to yourself um i'm not saying there's not a use for these cards but the way that i want to play my deck i don't want to play in a way where i'm taking a lot of these maybe this is what i mean by corrupt here's a corrupt one too um it's shield throw though which is kind of a shame i was looking for um bouncing shield the purple shield throw isn't much different than the non-purple one i don't think but it doesn't show the other upgrade versions here um this could be cool for ending the fight, but it doesn't do it doesn't do AOE or like a bounce effect. So it could be cool if you happen to draw it on like the very last monster and it's his turn. Maybe I'm dumb for not picking it, but I'm not going to. Um, I don't really want it. This is kind of this is kind of neat. Hero grant seven uh, sharp, so slashing and pierce damage is increased by that amount. So we can theoretically we can increase our damage by seven for one mana. Um, it could be good. I'm probably not going to take it, though. Maybe I could just take it to replace one of these uh, other cards, though, for now. That we uh, wanted to replace. Shuffle two fireballs in your deck. Okay. Fireball. I don't really need that. Uh, we can upgrade it. Cost zero and vanish. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm not going to take that, though. And this is all, like, dark and mine stuff. So I'll replace the aim shot, you know, with the... Uh, chant of accuracy 
And then we'll do another basic divination. See, see how clutch that basic. I think that was a basic, right? And then we had two corrupt cards from it. Um, none of that. I could talk all day about all the cards, right? But I'm just going to start going. This is something I want for sure. Scorching Ray, I'm going to probably take any time I see it on her. It's it's an AoE to start, and then it ends up being a high single target damage move for something that's pretty reasonably cost still, the three. So I think three is a good, you know, card cost. You get three per, per uh, turn naturally and there's ways to like enhance that like i've said before with like energize and certain characters are more supporty and you know etc but I, I do like scorching ray a lot and then none of this really this is uh sanctity is cool this uh keyword here i can talk about all the keywords for you know 45 minutes heals per when you hit something with sanctity but we're more going a bless build so we're not doing that and that's also aoe and i, I kind of want to keep this more single target so let's do that um Upgrade the Scorching Ray the same way we upgraded the other one. I wanted to uh, uh, do the damage more times for the little bit more damage, but on a random monster. Eventually, that'll be one monster, just high single target. Uh, remove a Frostbolt. So we only need to remove these two transmissions uh, in the deck. And then these three barriers and maybe this healing rain for him. I kind of want to get rid of these ruptures as well on him. And eventually de defense as opposed to these five um, attacks. So we'll do this a couple more times. And by a couple, I mean probably five or six more card rolls. I'm going to start going faster through it, though. Holy Storm, no, AoE, Fade, no, transform your block into shield. Shield is something that turns into block the next turn. So even if they don't have Fortify, you can, um, shield will turn into block. So I didn't realize that at first. I thought shield was actually magic defense and block was like physical defense. And I didn't, I, I guess I didn't read it carefully enough because it is pretty, pretty clear when you read it. I just, uh, sometimes I just think I'm uh, smarter than I am and, intuitively like oh i understand it shows a little star so that means it's magic defense but no it shield transforms into block the next turn which i don't want that <clears throat> over explaining something i don't want shield throw again that's a shame shake it off that's kind of cool dispel six um it's the corrupt version so dispel six and discard one and it's of your choice as well um that's pretty neat it's pretty neat. I don't know if I want to actually necessarily do that, though. Firestorm, no. Prescription is pretty cool, but again, I actually just want to look for corrupt versions of heals, bless heals, and uh, regeneration heals. I do like this, though, because you can upgrade it in a way where you discover three healing spells and place it on top of your deck. And it cost, the cost was reduced by one. So that's pretty cool. You can get some nice two or three costs for, um, you know, reduced costs and get pretty good heals. It depends, though. Sometimes you're going to clog your deck with not-so-great heals, though. You know, you'll get, like, a common unupgraded heal, and that'll be the best one. And that's, I, li I do like this card a lot, and I, I'm not trying to bash it or anything. But uh, I'm not going to take it because I'm trying to keep this deck very tight. Um this is a shame we have two corrupt and I'm not taking either one. This could be useful. Don't get me wrong. It actually could be useful. I'm not going to take it, though. Maybe somebody's mad and understands the game more than I do, but I'm not taking it. Eighteen dark. Applies 9 burn, 9 lightning, 9 cold. I can take this for now and just replace something. Um, I could possibly get rid of it later, but that is good damage for 2. And then it vanishes anyway, so this could be something uh, I definitely use. It also doesn't get rid of fire. It doesn't apply wet or anything, which would uh, get rid of fire stacks. It does cold, which is different. And lightning, that does more damage to the sides of what uh, lightning is on. And cold reduces their speed. So this is pretty useful. Um, this is like something that I... I'm sorry, this is a defense card. This is not something I would want. Um, 
This is something I'd want if I picked that pig priest, though. I do like the pig priest a lot. He's actually my favorite. He He's, he's all about putting a shield on characters and stuff. This is a kind of a high-cost one, though, but let's remove something on hers. Let's remove that transmission. So her deck's actually looking really good. If we can put, like, one more on her. <clears throat> let's look for another advanced divination. See some quality cards. Reinforced Steel is incredible. I would take this... I think I would take this any time it comes up, no matter what, on uh, on the uh, shield characters. I don't think there's ever a time I wouldn't want this, so we're definitely taking that. And it's already upgraded to the version that I want. See, this one vanishes. It applies uh, Fortify, but that's we don't need that. We have other cards later for Fortify, uh, and this stays in our deck now. It doesn't vanish for three. Doubles the uh, shield you have, and you gain uh, Slashing Blunt and Pierce Resistance for a turn. So that's nice. The double your shield part, you'll see, can get really wacky later. You can start stacking 1,000, 2,000 shield and doing massive damage with these uh, defense uh, shield bash characters. A lot of these characters, though, you have a way to break them. There's there's a way to break, I think, almost every character in this game, in a sense, with their, with their payoff card and doing, like, you know, crazy XYZ amount of damage later. It's a shame. Um, we could probably just go this for now. And replace that other uh, attack that he has. Da -da -da. No, none of that. Um, none of that. I wish this was... If it was a corrupt version, I probably would take that. Um, this is more defense. He's more heal. So I'm not taking that. Let's remove the fast strike. Now we have reinforced shield. Excellent. And uh, who else got a card? Yeah, Andrin. So we'll take out a rupture. We got that uh, poison dagger. So you can see, repeat once, right? So that does 14 damage. This does 17. This applies eight. Uh, eight. Uh, sorry, eight poison. This applies six bleed. Slow. No slow on this. But this only costs one, and this costs two. And this is only front monster, and this is any monster. So we will definitely replace that for that. You don't need to keep these decks at 15, but early game, I do like, again, I like to say, uh, I like to keep the decks very low to the ground, tight, etc. And then you add, you know, the various cards later that you want to really complete your build with. In my opinion, that's that's how I play at least. Um, we could do a little bit of support with her. Uh, energizing heroes. Our other heroes. Um... Mm, I'd rather have a specific one that I'm thinking of, so I'm going to pass up. This is a good one, though. I'm going to pass up on it, though. We have we have enough to do two more of these, I think. Let's take a guard. We want to keep Fortify up. This is the one I think I was thinking of here, um, or the book to create more of them. This applies Mark. It's three, though. requires stealth doesn't require stealth i'm not gonna take that um two mark 22 damage gain stealth three cost um i don't know scroll of intellect is nice zero cost it does take up a card space in your hand obviously but it does it energizes somebody an extra mana and gives them an extra card so um, I do like that. Overall, I think this is net positive and overall party, you know, power gain. I know you're losing like a, you're losing a, a draw, like a, a damage spell, but it kind of makes up for it with the uh, mana cost and the effect that it does. So I do like that. And I don't, we don't even necessarily need to upgrade that. The way that it upgrades. Who else did we add to? the guard so we can get rid of fast strike for that and we're going to upgrade the guard to do fortify the way that this upgrades you can this means it starts in your starting hand or on the top of your deck and let's see here she would draw a card instead of the person she gives it to and then the person she uses it to would get the energy so it's really not much better this way it's just kind of choosing who you want the extra card to go to really um this is cool in the sense of 
it's not a waste of a card slot because you do cycle the card and then somebody just gets a free energy. So overall it's about I, I would say it's about the same. I'll do this. I'll have her draw the card and just grant the energy though. I do like that. I could do one more after this, sorry if it's boring. I, I love the early game in this, though, so much. This is my favorite part of the game, is choosing the starting deck and kind of getting some uh, extra cards. None of this, none of that. We'll do one more. Corrupt card. Unfortunately, it's not useful for the deck, though. We're not really applying too much bleed. Um, geyser. Does fire damage, does ice damage, applies wet and cold, and wet prevents burn charges. This does do a lot of damage for two, though. Um, we're going to pass it, though. I don't really want to apply wet, and maybe it's dumb. Maybe it's just the damage alone probably would make up for the fact that it's applying wet. But as you can see, the, this whole deck really applies burn, so I don't really want to be applying wet. Holy Smite, this is a perfect last roll. I, I really wanted at least one more Holy Smite on Reginald, so let's get rid of the barrier. This disappears when we use it anyway, so we really just want to replace these two barriers at this point. And then we'll go... We can go the three cost. It applies Sanctity, does more damage, but it is a three cost. I'd rather stack Bless as best as I can and keep it low to the ground and use, you know utilize the mana so I can you know use more of these cards as opposed to less and you keep stacking this these Bless stacks. So I'm keeping it uh, lower. So these all look good. 15 cards, they're all good. Uh, they're all upgraded. Um, there's only a couple characters. Like I could replace this Rupture here. Maybe I can replace this later. Maybe I could replace that later. Um, I'm going to want to replace these for as many of these. Basically, this can replace almost anything in this deck. And this, there, there's a purple card later that will replace this that starts top deck and gives us like six Fortify. It's a really good starting card, and you just keep Fortify for essentially the whole battle. So guard will be replaced uh, eventually. Anything in this entire deck can basically be replaced by Reinforced Steel. But you do need, obviously, a couple cards to kickstart the block so you the block two double obviously so there, there's, it does need to be a few um standard you know block raising cards so without further ado i'm probably gonna put a timestamp too this is actually when we're starting the game if uh if i can do that in my uh studio thing i, I almost want to cut and just make this the first video um Now nah, we'll play a little bit. So here's the map. You see this uncommon event, uncommon event, characters, uh, character, rare event, etc. So if I was just, I'm going to just play this as if I don't know anything. I'm just starting out. Oh, here's a map transition. What's that? That's cool. So what can we, what can we hit here? What's the stargazer? What's that? You know, there's all kinds of different stuff. I see this. I see that it's blue, so I'd want to head for that. And maybe we can hit this on the way, this map transition. So we're, I'm going to go uh, upwards. Here's some corn monsters. Here's the speed, 26 speed, 2014, etc. It shows the order in which uh, they're playing. I think if you have such an excess, you actually go twice in a turn, but I don't actually know. Maybe I'm, I've played this for over 100 hours, and I actually like haven't quite figured that out yet. Uh, I'm going to go deflect first. Cycle those cards, see what we're working with essentially for how much mana. So six mana. So what I would think is three, four, five, six. Is there any point to playing this before these? This hits back monster, so I can do either or. I'll do this first. Hit the back. That's fine. Slice. Slice. And see, because of his item, he uh, he uh, drew a card. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Gives him more options on his turn. Less dead turns, too, where he just has nothing to play, etc. So we'll play the Enrage, get the energy, get the powerful. Um, great starting turn. Put the guard on him. And we want to use this dead last to double as much shield as possible. So do this. This. Now we have 79. Doubling it. 166 block first turn. 3 fortify. It's looking good. This is what I'm talking about with this Ember Storm. We use it. We get rid of it. AoE. Boom. This guy's about to die from burn on his turn. Let's see if we have any more of those. Uh, if we have a front monster, we can kill him. We have a uh, target. Let's target this back guy. He'll die on his turn now. Flare will hit the middle guy. And then, uh, let's see, put this on him. Oh, here we go. There's a zero cost uh, fire blast. 
How do I have a zero cost fire blast? Oh, I'm sorry. That's just a zero cost card. Yeah, fire blast is zero. It does a little less damage though. We'll put that in the middle guy. And then I guess we have mana to kill him. And then we have mana to almost kill him. So turn one or round one uh, kill on this enemy squad. This is the very first battle, obviously, so it's not that hard. But uh, I want to apply this first because it grants him three bless, which does increase his damage. 20 to 23 damage. You see that? Okay. So kill him. Now this does 15. Kill him. All right. Excellent score. The faster you kill them, the more bonus you get. The more I think this is experience for uh, the characters. Uh, they level up faster, etc. Uh, gold uh, card tiers. This. Oh man. Uh, corrupt. Corrupt deflect. That's so nice. I love the cards that vanish that end up being corrupt that you use because it's just like. It's exactly what I'd be using anyway, but it's also additional bonuses or like just bigger effects. So this actually gives evasion now. So that's perfect. I'm definitely taking this. I can take as many deflects as it gives me, really. I, I really like deflects, so I'll take that for sure. Uh, Ember Storm, don't really want it. Healing Rain, this is an example of something that I could take. This is zero cost, eight heal, five regeneration, dispels fire, zero cost, and vanishes. So this is what I'm talking about. I want to take these these corrupt heal cards for the healer. I want to keep him as holy damage, but then I also want the corrupt vanishing heals that I can use uh, at my you know discretion uh, when I think the time is right. So I think that's great. Um, and nothing really here. Punch, punch, helping hand, etc. This dispels slow on somebody, grants them an extra card. And it's okay. I mean, it's okay. It's a zero cost. It gives somebody else an extra card. It's overall it's value, right? But I'm not taking it. Do this uh, uncommon event. So there's choices in this game. Leave the granary alone and continue your journey. That's kind of boring. Combat, kill the infected farmers. Uh, ambush, try to gain an advantage. And there's different roles for the different uh, events. So I'd like to gain an advantage, right? And if it's at all possible. When you fail, sometimes there's a negative effect. Uh, most of the time there's a negative effect, I think. Um, that I, that, I can, that I can think of at the top of my head. So five or lower, 75% chance, right? So they're all going to roll um, random card. If it's five or lower, I successfully, I didn't successfully do it. So I think the negative effect in this, for example, I don't get any like um, broken bones or anything, but I think they attack first now or something like that. They have more speed. As you can see, there's green bonus to speed. Two, two of my characters still go before them anyway, though. So that one's really not a big deal. Let's use the deflect first. Uh, Chant of accuracy, definitely use this first. This gives us more slash damage. So there we go, seven more splash, splash, uh, slash damage. Um, let's three, four, five, we can use adrenaline. Also gain a card after I use this. Okay, and three slashes on the front. Lots of damage, cool. Using rage first, see what else we can get. Seven energy now, shield charge. I might end up actually using that turn one. Uh, does this kill him? No, but shield charge does. And he doesn't have fortify, so that's going to go away anyway. So we kill him. Love Scorching Ray. It's making sure there's nothing to play first. Um, she has three... Six in total, so we can use flay. Let's see what this does. Okay, front monster. Uh, let's go. Hmm. They both go after the wolf. Um, can we kill this guy? That guy's gonna die now from burn and poison. This guy's gonna die now. Uh, let's give him more energy. Eight energy. He should be able to finish them. Uh, use this first to increase the bless stacks. This does more damage now. As you can see, in real time, it'll go up uh, in your hand. I'll use this just for whatever. Hit him. Hit him. Kill him. There we go. Round one. Dead. Uh, none of that. Poison builds, I love this on the other rogue, but I'm not going to take that. Uh, nothing here, really. Nothing here. 
Wow. I accidentally went the wrong way. I should have went up. I wasn't even thinking. That's fine. We'll just go a different way. Um, okay. Now, what this means is uh, this will be a bonus effect if you choose to do this enhanced battle, essentially. Um, we don't have any cards to upgrade, but I could always use gold and uh, the crystals or whatever they're called in the game, the resource, and uh, supplies, which are very useful. This upgrades your town. I didn't even explain that. My town is fully upgraded now, so now at max town, I can just sell these for extra gold and uh, blue. And as you can see, I've been kind of amassing them. So it is it is useful to have supplies, etc. So the monster is all going to have more HP. They're going to have more resistance. They're going to be immune to insanity, which is cool because, it, it, good for us, I guess, because none of these guys use insanity. And then sad cards are shuffled in your deck every round, which is annoying because they clog your deck. And then they also, uh, if you don't use them, they clog it more next round, etc. There's just more and more in your deck. And uh, using them also decreases your mind resistance. So it's annoying, but I'm hoping I can just kill them round one anyway. If not, uh, round two, probably. All right, it's almost dead. One of them is. Um, we could probably kill him with these two attacks. We're not going to keep the fortify anyway, which or the block anyway, which kind of sucks. But we'll tank a little bit if they uh, decide to hit the front. Uh, all monsters. That's easy choice for me. There's still three monsters. The all monsters damage for one that vanishes. Um, random monster scorching ray. Uh, yeah, let's see where that goes. Okay. I'll use the sad, because we still have two energy anyway. Um, pump him with more energy. Draw a card. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't use that. Maybe I should have used it first. But, um... Yeah, I, I kind of played that a little bit out of order, but that's okay. These are still early battles. It's not that big of a deal. So, probably... Mm, well, there's really no point to not do this unless we can meditate into that bless heal. Now we didn't, so it's fine. Um, we'll do this on him, and then we'll put yeah. And there's no point to not play healing rain, heal and uh, and uh, regeneration. So every turn they you know regenerate this amount of health, which is really nice. She could use the heal too, and uh, let's hit him more, and then just put barrier on him to give him a little uh, block next round. I do have this on um, fast mode. I'll turn that off for around and show you what it normally would look like. This is good. We got this uh, reinforced steel. Um, it would be worth it still to defend and reinforce. Unfortunately, we can't get rid of these sad cards this turn, so it might start clogging our deck if it goes on too long. Um, 10 energy, so we're not really worried about energy. So we'll put the bless on him first, deal more damage. Um, this flash will actually kill him, so I don't need to waste the Holy Smite on him. We'll just kill him right away. Um, use the Holy Smite, maybe on the back line, and then hit him again, hit him again. Hopefully wipe him out turn two here. Um, all monsters, okay, dead. Scorching Ray, that's probably going to kill him. Okay, not quite. He's got enough burn damage to die now, though. Guard. I have three already. But I could actually replace something for guard, so I will take that. Um, next town, though, I can... Uh, I got the upgraded... You know, I got the upgraded hometown thing where I can get purple cards on my second town. So... I can actually eventually replace these guards as well, but I'll take it for now. If there's an upgrade altar, I think there is. Um, Blade Flurry is pretty cool for, like, a bleed or poison. It does pretty decent damage. I do like this card. 
maybe for a payoff card later. We can always craft it, too. It's only a blue rarity, so I'm going to pass up on it. And then none of that. None of this. Yeah, here's the altar anyway, so I'll park it up. Okay, Bandit Patrol. Da -da -da -da. Um, you can read it if you want. Leave. Forget about the south path and go north. Combat. You have no mercy on bands who attack them. Sneak away. I don't really want to sneak away, right? Search for magic shards. Oh, I could search for magic shards, right? I mean... Mm, I already have a lot of shards, though, so I'll just attack them. I'll probably uh, call it the video because it's already been probably going for like 40 minutes or so after uh, the boss on this map. But it chanted accuracy for sure. Increase that uh, that slashing damage. Deflect. Nice. Gives me evade. Let's do slice. Wow. Okay. Um, I gotta do that. And then a slice. Good. They're already both half dead. Probably should be able to kill them round one. Let's enrage first. Get another card. Get more powerful. Um, put a guard on him. I do want to actually play the damage because I want to kill them round one. But we can do all this. So do that. Um, what would be more armor now? See, could I play this and two or three of these? I think this and two would be the best, right? Yeah, it would be the best. 29 versus 25. So that, that, that. 108. Oh, there's a boar now in the front. That's annoying. I think we still win the battle if I can just kill these guys. But I'm not entirely sure. I know on bosses I think it's like that, but I'm not sure on... Oh, here we go. All monsters. Perfect. Ooh, target sides. That's so good. Okay. Well, we'll do all monsters first. And then... Target sides. He'll die. Monster. Yeah. Uh, front mods. What does more damage? 17. This does more damage. So we'll put that on uh, this higher HP guy. I want to use one flash on him. Okay. Hmm. Not the greatest hand. We don't really have a lot of damage. So I'll use one on him. Battle doesn't actually end, unfortunately. So kill him. We have one leftover enemy. We'll use the healing rain. We'll use it again. There's no point not to. I uh, went to round two, so now we only have great performance. That's, that's unfortunate. Anyway, um, that's okay. Alright. Don't want any of that. None of this. Corrupt card would be really cool if he was, uh, she was a lightning... Mage, but I'm not going lightning, so I'm not going to pick it. Your first time playing, you might just pick all the cool corrupt cards, and there's really nothing wrong with that. I just, I like to keep it pretty focused. Um, broken altar. Hmm. This is such a low chance, so we'll try to fix the altar a, a bit before using a 68% chance. So that's pretty high probability. We'll see what happens. All right, we did get it. Cool, 10% discount on it. So we'll just increase. The, it's really not the old cost 90. It's 81. I have, you know, 11,000, whatever, 12,000 almost. So that's fine. We'll get another fortify. So we can always hit the fortifies. So I might as well just upgrade this for now. Oh, wow. So this is the golem uh, character. Uh... I think this just gives you a bonus. It still accepts the thing, but it gives you a little bonus because you're playing a certain character. So I'll pick the mage, 400 uh, shards bonus, and I believe, yes, yeah, so we do have that quest now. So this is a way you can unlock the uh, the robot character. Story time, okay. Well, leave without doing anything, except vaguely tell them you want to reach out. That's more unlikely than likely and then we can also talk about the wolf wars if he picks a defense card he is a defense i'm going defense on him so we'll see what happens okay good well fed excellent that's really good so magnus receives this card on draw he gets a card he gets three regeneration he gets two vitality so he gets 10 bonus hp 
like uh, yeah so that's uh that's good werewolf stall maybe we can get some items this is a boss type event so i'm gonna go i i told you i was playing as if i didn't know but you know i'm gonna i'm gonna do the big wolf butcher guy he's cool uh remove two cards maybe quality and quantity of cards yeah uh immune to bleed nobody's really going bleed that's that's fine Still, it's still map one too, so none of it's too hard yet. Especially if you have the meta progression going and the levels on your characters. Um, hit that back one. I'm gonna poison dagger him too. Slice, slice. He's gonna die on his turn. Okay, so guard. Immune to bleed, that's unfortunate. So we do have a little bit of bleed in this deck. I do want to get rid of that. I'm actually just going to go pure pure block for him. And hopefully get that payoff card next round. We have two rounds to get excellent score in this fight. It does give you a little bit more time uh, later on in the game from the first fights. It's not uh, it's incredibly important to get the excellent score, but it's good to keep it in the green area because then you get like... You get better cards, you get more gold, etc. It's really not that big of a deal, though. Uh, all monsters, Ember Storm. I think that's an easy choice. Mana gem, sure. Pump the mana, give her energize. Uh, front monster. We have enough to play all this anyway, so we'll do this. This guy's gonna die anyway, and then mm, kill him. Almost. He's gonna die in his turn. So we gotta focus on these now. Uh, healing rain, there's no point not to. Healing rain, there's no point not to. So we'll hit him. And we'll uh, hit him. He's dead. Flash him. He'll he'll be dead next turn. I think. I'm gonna waste a I'm gonna waste a slice on the front guy. He's gonna die anyway though, but. Rupture, awesome. Okay, front monster 17. Chant of Accuracy first. We only have two mana now, but here's Adrenaline. Great. So, get him. Let's rupture him. There's Shield Charge, so we have just enough to use it. Kill him. See, he's poisoned, so he took a little poison damage at the end of his turn. There's a lot of different... Um, buffs and debuffs. They're not really that confusing. Once you recognize them, regen so he heals that per turn. Extra HP. Fortify so he can keep his shield. Poison damage he's going to take. Uh, decay which he heals less now. Bleed so he takes bleed damage on his turn. He's slower and you can it, that reflects on the red number too under his uh, portrait. So you know various enemies do different effects to your cards. It's it's intimidating at first, but once you recognize them, it's it's not a big deal. And a lot of them are ignorable. There's some more important ones than others. Anyway, um, yeah, he's got one health as a skill. Oh, whoops! He had shield. Okay, he's dead now. None of that. Double strike. Expose armor. That's something I probably would want. Yeah, mark. A vulnerable. High damage. Okay. Get that. Front monster. Searing touch is pretty cool. That does... Uh, I want to replace probably the fire blast for that. Yeah, I'll take searing touch. And none of that. I know him. He served under me in the Wolf Wars. Maybe I can reason with him. Sure, let's try to reason with the big wolf guy. I get 24 of this, uh... Is it, like, game XP? I forget what this is exactly. I think it's, like, character XP for the game. You'll see, they'll probably level up, actually, after this fight, too. Reason I'm not using exposed armor first is because it's unupgraded, so it's obviously you know like inherently less useful. It's still good, but I, I like to keep the cards that are upgraded. The ones I want to use the cards that are upgraded, obviously. So slice, slice, 
I'll use it if it comes up and it's the only thing, but I want to use my upgraded slices to really put on a lot of marks. Okay, let's uh, enrage guard for sure. Um, stack shield, another guard, another defense. We can use both of these. He's already almost half dead, which is cool. And we have three rounds, I think, to get excellent. We might even have four, forget. Um, I think he does summon stuff, so I'm going to save that. Monster, good. Front monster. We're going to probably end up using it anyway. That's fine. I want to put as much, you know, bleed, mark, burn, etc. on him as fast as possible. Healing rate. This is weird. We're getting this every time in our starting hand. The RNG is uh, a little odd here. I'm going to use it all, though, so I can not clog my hand up. Use both of those. Increases bless. I believe if he dies, it's it's the fight's actually over on bosses. And you don't necessarily need to kill these. Unfortunately, look at this hand, though. This is all just front monster for the rogue. It is what it is, though. That's the path I chose to go with him. Chant of accuracy, okay. Almost killed him. It's just kind of pointless. I need a way just to kill him. Um, put guard back on him. Defend, it's fine. I'm hoping that these two can kill him. Yeah, you have, we have three rounds to get excellent still, so we'll, we'll definitely get excellent. Look at all that damage he took. Poison and bleed and burn. This is an effect he applied to himself. Alright. Wow. Okay. I mean, it's alright. We'll put Bless on himself. We'll deal the Holy Smite. I think this will just about kill him. Holy Smite. Uh, he is applying that shield, though, with this effect, unfortunately. But I think he is going to die from that poison and bleed and fire next turn. We could probably kill him right here. Flare, monster. Could put that on a monster. Put that on. Okay, there we go. Helping hand. It's the corrupt version, so I can dispel three different things. Shackle. I can dispel mind, uh, insane, you know, mind resistance. Uh, slow. And then grant a card. I know that, that you're going to find it annoying, right? But I'm probably not going to pick it. Um... It could be, it could be good, but I want to just keep his shields up and ignite one mana for apply fourteen burn. Hmm. Let's see what else the one mana cards do. I mean, one mana. What's one mana? Fourteen burn. This does ten fire and five burn. So I don't know if I have something that actually does damage based on burn this could theoretically be better than this and it's also target this is only front right i'm sorry that's that's the unupgraded version too so this does actually 18 you know total so this does more but it's only front and if i had something to, to uh i think there is a card that actually does damage based on burn so i'll take this for now and see if i can find that card level up definitely take the level when they can so here we go. You kind of choose paths for their, your. This is more of a, just like an attack, you know, bruisery attack type uh, wolf, or you can go defense. So when I put this on him, he has all resistance as long as it's up. If I have enough block, this should stay on him pretty much the whole fight. And if he does happen to get damaged, like uh, you know, health damage, he gains uh, you know, that slash and blunt and uh, etc. Resistance and more block. So we'll put that in his deck. Maneuver for every uh, energy used, draw a card, nine, block, evade, etc. Wild hunt um, for every energy used, apply two, mark to a random uh, monster. This one is a little harder to use. You have to have a little bit more setup, but I am going to pick it because I want to apply as much mark as I can to stuff. Straight up, more fire damage. Um, last one turn, more fire damage. Apply with hit, no no wet, which is good. So lightning, apply three burn, apply three cold. So I think that's really good. It's zero mana, it just increases our damage for the turn. Um, I could do that. I think this in, this uh, changes her damage type. I'm pretty sure that's what this one does. It's been a while since I picked it, but it can turn her fire damage into like cold or whatever. I don't necessarily need that. I, I'd rather just do more fire because I'm just I'm playing her fire. That's fine. I'm not playing her as like a flex or whatever character. 
But it's cool in certain situations. Like, if you're fighting fire enemies, that's a useful thing to, you know, go, like, cold as opposed to fire because they're more, you know, resistant to burn and fire, etc. Um, healing spells. I'm going healing spells, but not primarily. I'm primarily going bless and he uh, holy damage. So damage by others, deal holy damage, increase my bless, and it's four uses. So I'm going to go divine retribution for that. Uh, let's see what we find. Here's the treasure. They all take turns you know, picking a treasure. This is multiplayer, by the way. You can all play your own character. You can play two characters you want with a friend who's playing two characters. You can assign the slots however you want. It's it's really cool. I, I've tried multiplayer with a, a friend already, and it was fun. Um, you know, it obviously takes a little longer to get to your turn, but it's nice. The social aspect of it, I think, is fun. If you, um, if you like talking and playing and, like, shooting the shit or whatever, and, like, it's pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Well, more more uh, block charges. I'll probably just do that. This shuffles Howl in the deck. In my opinion, that's kind of a waste of a card slot. I mean, overall, I do want all resistance and HP, but um, yeah, I just I want block charges really. So let's do that. This I'd rather draw a card than apply one bleed on hit. So I'm good on that. Cast Pebble Throw. Not shuffle in your deck. Cast an extra four damage for free. Uh, so I might as well at, th at this point. All resistance. Do I want to replace ten uh, cold, lightning, and burn or fire resistance for three all resistance? Not necessarily. Uh, we can increase her, you know, uh, blunt, pierce, and slash resistance. Uh, we could do that. We could put that on him, too. But, you know, um, we should put this on her and then hit this on him, I would say, for, or we can give her all resistance and howl, but I don't really want to, I just don't want to give anyone howl, to be honest. That's the thing. I know that's such a lame reason not to pick this, but I'm just going to give her this and then him, the 3%. And here's the boss. Okay. So try to rest. They're all pretty much full HP. Um... Starting with stealth is too difficult. So, yeah, we'll try to rest, I guess. But there's really not much health to be healed. Yeah, I get a little bonus XP or whatever for that. This guy heals. He applies thorns to himself, so it hurts you if you hit him. Etc. Um, let's use that chant of accuracy first. Uh, slice. We have just enough to play all of these cards and not the exposed armor, the unupgraded exposed armor. So let's do that. One health, of course. He's after everyone else, so if I can somehow skip him. Put a guard on for sure. Uh, defend, defend, and a guard. Perfect use of the energy. Ignite anyone. Yeah, let's ignite the tree, right? And look at his... If you go over him, you can see his resistances and stuff in the top corner. So he's minus 10% to uh, fire. And I'm assume, I No, burn, I think, does the same to everyone. It just does the damage it says. But uh, fire damage will do more to him. So I do want to deal fire damage to him. I mean, it's a tree, so kind of makes sense. Deal burn damage to him. Um, give him the extra card and energy. Or, I'm sorry, she gets the card. I keep forgetting that. Deal more burn to him. Front monster will just die, I guess. Gonna healing rain because why not? Um, meditate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna take first. Okay, and grant some shield on him so he gets more block next turn. Uh, holy smite the tree. Holy smite the tree. I want to kill the tree. This guy will probably do enough frontline damage to pretty much kill her anyway. Wild Hunt. Do we have enough... Mm, 
I think we have. I mean, I, I mean, it's now or never, right? I mean, probably. It's fine. We'll draw a card from that hit too. Hopefully, get another. Oh, okay. More deflects, more armor. Look how much armor he's building too. So four in total. Three, four, I would say. Um, slash back monster. That's perfect. So I'll deal more damage to the tree. Three energy in total. Um, I want to actually deal damage to that front monster. And then we'll put on this wolf guard. It's for 15% resistance. As you can see, his resistance is higher. All resistance. I don't see his fire, cold, or lightning being boosted, though. So I don't quite understand that. I see, like, the, you know, the, sl the blunt and the pierce and the slash is, like, green, and it looks like way higher obviously um so i don't know exactly he is reinforced so that's increasing those so all resistance maybe his was like 15 before or whatever and then those would have been like 60 or whatever so that's that's fine um i'm gonna use this last because i want to just deal as much damage as possible if i have the mana to use it yeah i have the mana so that's fine do that flash Heal. Does anybody need healing? Nobody. Oh, he actually could use healing, so we'll heal and put a little block on him next turn. We'll definitely kill this guy next turn. Random monster. A lot of damage. Four times. It's really good. That's. Yeah, he's pretty much dead here. Okay. Great, killed the boss. Pretty high health still. Back to the town. Uh, none of this. None of that. All monsters. That's cool, but it's like once we're on single target, it's less useful. But it's like cool if you can draw that like first turn or second turn, that's awesome, but um I'm playing really boring style. This might be something. Here's a corrupt heal like I was talking about. I'd rather have corrupt heals that give myself bless or like regeneration as well, but this chains three, which is nice too. And you get to pick the hero. It is a pretty big heal. It's three. Um, we'll pick that. That's fine. Let's see what kind of loot. So this is probably something that I, that I would want. Um, okay. All resistance six percent. When you play a defense, uh, gain two thorns. Sure, I can do that instead of the round shield. I don't get the block charges anymore, but those were pretty minimal anyway. Um, hmm. Gain thorns and regeneration and more HP instead of a slingshot mini little four I think it's like four damage that's uh, yeah I'll go regeneration and thorns on him and uh, let's see it's basically the same th I mean it's cold and mind resistance and an eight block mm. we can give her one evade she can evade an attack I don't really have any... Well, when you play a book, draw a card, random hero gains. She has one so far, the scroll. All right, so I don't know if it's necessarily worth picking this. It does increase all of her damage, though. I'll, I'll pick that for her for now. And then uh, put this armor on him. Or the evade. Eh, I'll go the block back to town okay so we get to choose which portal we go to so maybe we want to get red over with because we have the fire mage Let's just kind of get it out of the way that's sort of my mentality i want to like rip the band-aid off essentially so black forge that's this quest right so it's pretty apparent when there's stuff on the map that you can go to or that so to get this character i would go here right and then i don't know if there's any requirements past that so i do want to end up there you see these paths so if I go this way all around here, I can hit this, whatever this is, and uh, hit that still, right? I think that's the only way to really get there. So if we go this bottom path, um, we could go middle to here, through here. 
Um, I'll go around. Like this Coliseum looks interesting, right? So, but before that, we click the town, remove excess cards. So we have 18 now. We'll get rid of this fast strike. Get rid of this rend. This uh, rend. Uh, what else do we have in here? Wild hunts, good adrenaline. I can keep an adrenaline, I guess. Rupture, I'll get rid of that. Uh, I don't know about this debilitate, to be honest. Because he's... Let's see what the exposed armor does if we upgrade it in comparison. We're going to keep it front for three. They're both three costs. So, 23, 26. Five mark, three mark. Two weak, so damage and heal done, 50%. Um, five vulnerable, so that's 25% more damage. He loses two, so most likely, and he goes, he's fast, so the characters will utilize that. So I'll probably get rid of the debilitate, actually, and maybe even the poison daggers, or maybe the chant of accuracy. I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, whoops. Wrong thing. Getting rid of this. Getting rid of uh, poisoned. Okay. What can we get rid of on her? Hmm. Her deck looks actually pretty good. Maybe some of the fire blasts, like one of these. Uh, maybe one. Six, you see this mana curve here. Maybe we can get rid of a one, like one of the searing touches. I, I did take a searing touch. You know what? Um, 18, 12, and 7, 18, and 4. Have a fireball that goes away. Um, maybe the fireball. It does get burned, though. So do the AoE and then burn it or whatever. Um, Maybe just the fire blast. I like the scorching rays a lot. Do we need to get rid of any of this? I do want to upgrade the searing touch. Oops. We do have a mana gem as well, so the mana her mana is a little bit uh a little bit boosted from that. We could probably get rid of a fire blast. And then maybe this flare. There we go, that's good. Okay. Barrier, get rid of that finally. Other barrier, get rid of that. He's at 16 cards. Uh get rid of the orange healing ring, because we have this awesome corrupt version of it. Cool. That's that's a uh, nice looking uh, deck there 15 just this is pretty much everything I want to play I have one corrupt heal I have two corrupt heals actually straight heal regen dispels fire we're at the fire map now you know um, meditate divine grace boost the uh, bless damage by others give them bless deal holy damage holy damage and bless and then you know free damage at the end now, what we want to do now, when you upgrade your town enough, you'll get uh, purple cards. See, I know it's disappointing because you probably don't have this if you are playing this. I gotta cut the game. I gotta cut the video off though. But uh, now we can get some of the really important uh, shield stuff. So shield wall, reinforce shield. Um, what's important for this guy? We have so much blue. We can just upgrade everything. That's you're not gonna have this much. Ambidextrous could be cool. Because the upgrade you see this duplicate one attack from your hand re reduce the cost by two. So what my strategy is is basically turning these exposed armors into crazy upgraded versions of Slice. So now you understand like this the style of play that I want to play this guy. He it's Mark Rogue, you know, it's single target front you know front monster mark rogue so i'm gonna go ambidextrous so i can do that i would love to have maybe one more exposed armor though to like increase the odds of uh landing both of these in my hand because if i get too many of these it's going to be like a dead card because i don't want to use it on slice um so maybe i can actually uh craft an exposed armor 
There we go. I'll craft one. You know what? Maybe we can craft another. We'll have three, so the ratio will be good. It'll be one ambidextrous, three exposed armor. I could take another ambidextrous if I, uh, if I see it. We definitely want this version. It burns, duplicates, and then reduce cost reduced by three until discarded. See, that's cool, right? It'd be zero. It'd be zero for zero, right? But then it goes back to being three. I want to reduce it to one mana. So we'll do that. Exposed armor, perfect. It's one mana exposed armor. I could do that to it. That's nice. Um, and this looks good. I Honestly, there's really no bloat. This is maybe a little bit of bloat here, this chain of accuracy. I'm actually going to remove that. I know it's like it sucks removing cool, corrupt cards, but it's like seven for like what? I mean... I'd rather just be using one to deal damage and apply mark so everyone can do more damage as opposed to him just doing like seven extra damage. So I'm going to remove that. I almost want to remove this adrenaline, but that burns when you use it too, and that's fine. I think it's okay. Anyway, let's remove some of these guys. Now we have reinforced uh, steel and shield wall, and you'll see what I mean by this. This is really nice. So I'll get rid of a guard, and then I'll get rid of another guard. Okay. And we'll upgrade these. Reinforced Steel. Definitely want to keep it in our deck. So it removes that Vanish thing. Shield Wall. This, this is what I'm talking about. Shield Wall. Go this route for sure. Doesn't Vanish. Stays in our deck. Top deck. Top deck, 7, Fortify. So I keep Fortify the, basically the whole game. It also gives us this Mitigate. Damage uh, taken is reduced by 3. 76 block. So that's a great turn 1. Um, everything's looking really good actually right now. So I'll, I'm going to check the shop. See what, and if you play a card that leaves your hand empty, draw three cards. That could be kind of cool for the rogue if I can get him rolling later. It's also just a better resistance uh, amulet here. Combat start, gain powerful. Um, wow, blessed charges. Here we go, chalice of kings. I'm mean, gonna have to do it. Blessed damage, healed them. This is everything I want, right? Sanctity. I'm not doing so much, but he does do a little bit of sanctity with that uh, ability. And then Bless Charges is very important on him. So this, I think, is the first thing we buy. And, uh, wow, when you play a spell, draw a card. Mm, when you play a book, draw a card. And a random hero gets another card. When you play a spell, draw a card. That's that's going to be consistent every single turn, though. And that's this is not. This Quill is not. Um, I think I might want to just do that instead. Yeah, probably. Who needs all resistance? Instead of this, we can give her all resistance, right? I mean... I like the block charges. I, I, he could probably use resistance more than block charges at this point, though. The front line. And then... Uh, oh, I should, ooh, I could sell supplies to get that. If you play a card that leaves your hand empty, who would do that? Who would be the... He would pretty much never do that, right? He's, he's always going to be applying big block moves. Um, maybe him, if I can keep his... It's like deflects, and it's like one cost slices, and then theoretically, you know, one claw, uh, cost exposed armors, and if I can boost his... Ener if I can keep him energized, that might happen to him, where he plays a card that leaves his hand empty. Um, but I don't know if I really want to do that. Let's see uh, a basic divination here. I can get a cool card. Extra deflect. That's fine. And I'll sell a little bit. Let's just sell four. Do another basic. I have 140. I can even sell like 10 more. It doesn't really matter. I have a lot. Um, none of that. None of this. None of this. Let's get something good. Let's let's see. We have this advanced divination. Let's do at least one of those. So sell that. Do an advanced. See if we get something really cool. None of that. Hmm. Another adrenaline. I don't want to clog his deck up with adrenalines really. But then, if I take another Adrenaline, I could maybe take that bag, you know? So, maybe I will. We go Adrenaline. Um, that's, I think, once per turn. So, we actually maybe could even keep it. Now, you know what? I'm going to keep it. Uh, I, like, I like Vanishing. It's nice. 
two and vanish. Or it could take up a card slot and give me one. Um, let's do that. It almost seems like cheating, but I'm going to give him the bag. Give him the bag there. Do another fast divination. None of that. None of that. Uh, all monsters and it does disappear, so that's pretty cool, actually. I might take that and see what we can replace for it. Okay, that goes away now. I like that. That's nice. Probably this fire blast. Actually, this is... Yeah, that's okay. 15, that's that's good. That looks like a nice deck. And then maybe we can do... Ah, man, maybe one battle just to show the new upgraded decks. Um, let's go up. That's what I decided. I'm going up. Party will gain. Okay, resistance. Fire resistance. Oh, when a monster deals damage, deals burn. Uh, let's try it. It's a harder battle. So, she's not going to do as much this fight. Oh, okay. So, we're going to use the bag, right? Now watch the bag in action. Three more cards. Perfect. Um, deflect. So the bag seems immediately useful now. We have ambidextrous. Rank that one. Awesome. Uh, use that. Use the other one. Ten stacks of this vulnerable. Fourteen marks on him. It's a shame he didn't die. It's kind of annoying. It's like It seemed like a very successful turn. Shield wall immediately. It's pretty much what you want to do always. Um, make sure you have the mana to use Enrage if you have it in your hand, which I do. So use Enrage. I have two. No point in not applying this, really. 15% resistance. Put a defend on. And this is multiplayer. I know I said that. I, I should have said that immediately. I feel like I kind of messed up the video because I should have said that in the intro. Ember Storm. There's no point to not playing that first. Uh, let's get mana. Scroll. Put it on him. Um, see where just see what that hits. I guess I don't know. We have enough to play all these cards. Front monster. Let's just do that. Um, front monster. Sure. Let's just put everything on him. Oh, he's taking a little burn. Let's see. Healing Rain. Oh, dispels the burn. That's perfect for this. Um, meditate. I'll play that, sure. Holy Smite. Do it to the front guy. Let's see if we can almost just about kill him. It's unfortunate. He's probably going to waste an attack on him now, but it's okay. Had to happen. Um, it's going to be a pretty... Let's see. Three, four, four energy... Let's do it. Alright. Can we kill them round two? He doesn't have much block, so he's not going to be doing too much damage on that shield slam yet. I almost want to play her support and do more of those scrolls to boost people's uh, cards and energy. Uh, what do we do first? Grant. Yeah, Grant uh, Bless. And that would put us at uh, eight energy, so two, four, six, seven, free. Yeah, so I'll do this first. Um, he evades, so I actually want to use a flash on the evasion. So we're going to smite the guy in the back. We'll use a flash on him to get rid of the evade. And then uh, kill him in the back. Let's see if we can kill him round two. Two more. She's going to do less damage, though, with the fire. Now he can't do any damage. Darn. Okay, do we reinforce? No, see, this wouldn't be worth it. 47. Um, what I want to do, actually, is just defend three times, because that's going to give us the most block uh, for the mana. Or, for the energy, sorry. Random monster. Scorching rays. Oh, here's uh, dark damage and, uh, you know, lightning and cold. Um... Lightning is not going to do anything this turn, but dark damage might be good for us. 
Oh, I should have done this. Oh, no. Well, you know what? That didn't affect it, actually. Okay, that's fine. That didn't affect that one because that was doing dark. So let's see if we can kill him. Come on. Ah, 14. That's fine. Yeah, we killed him in round three. Great performance. That's fine. Won't waste the time doing the deflects. It's a habit, though. I always do those first, no matter what. Um, none of that. None of that. Firestorm. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So that's kind of cool. Applies burn depending on my burn. So there's builds where you can kind of like self burn. Kind of neat. Um, not doing that though. All right, I'm gonna call it a video. But as you can see, trying to get this character heading around here. Um, I know the video is probably like an hour long, so I'm calling it. But that is, uh, I'm gonna call it. That's uh, across the obelisk. I think it's super fun. Like I said, it's like 50, it's like sixteen dollars. I think I already have over a hundred hours on this, and I, I just bought it like uh, probably a week and a half ago. So you can see, I just nerded out and just played this pretty much nonstop. Um, it's really addictive. Uh, overall, my thoughts when you start playing it, it's really exciting, like the different cards and theorizing the decks. And there's so many different, um, there, there's so, there isn't and is so many different combinations where like when you first start, it seems endless, but when you understand it more, like you do start refining the builds a little bit more, as I can say, like, I'm just kind of passing up a lot of cards or like, eh, no, 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 no. But it is fun because you unlock more characters and there's different synergies between the different characters and you start getting like... You know, you can get the like the Lovecraft Priest guy, like he does mind damage and stuff. You get the Witch Doctor, you get the Poison Rogue, you can get the uh, Robot, the Berserker. There's, there's all kinds of the Electric Mage, you know, and they're adding more. I mean, the dev is going to add several more. So there's all these different synergies you can do um, with the characters. That's uh, really cool to pick out like a party that you enjoy playing and trying to make like the perfect build and as you get to the late game they start getting like really cool like you know more rare cards and um the synergy start once they start leveling up as well with these traits um it's it's just really cool um they could start doing some crazy combos and having you know 10 energy in a turn and doing like awesome like nukes and stuff and it's pretty cool uh it's a great game I think. And I think definitely think it's worth the price. I would buy it now. Early access, it's worth 16 I definitely think it's worth full price. Um, I would even... I probably I would have paid more for it. I, I would have paid 20 25 for this game. Considering, now, in retrospect, you know, now that I've played 100 hours, I, I definitely think it's worth the price. And again, it's multiplayer too. And I did try that, and it was fun. And it seemed seamless, and it was good. Um, so, yeah, I definitely recommend it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I rambled a lot in the start when I was deck building. I, I just find that aspect very fun about the game. Anyway, until next time.